Hello everyone, this is Lindsay and welcome back to my channel. And I have a little ephemera project share for you, uh, some things I've added to my shop, and then two marketplace journals. So I am excited um, to share those with you. Uh, Glombowski, I think is the last name. I'm not sure what her first name is. It might say in the, um, it's Grand Fern Alley, I think might be her shop or craft name. So we'll get into that in a minute. But as you know, 2020, I've been focusing on organizing ephemera. And so I want to help you guys out too and create things that you can put ephemera into to kind of organize. So I have several different things that I've added to my section in the website. If you haven't been on the website in a day or two, you might notice a couple of changes. We have reorganized so you can easily find um, things just a little bit better. There's three sections for me, three sections for Joanne, and then there's the marketplace, the print shop, and a huge sale section. So Lindsay's handmade and Joanne's handmade are things like this that we've made. Then we have our supply sections, our digital sections, then the print shop would be prints of my digitals, and then of course the marketplace. So hopefully that will make it easier for everybody, especially for Joanne and I when we're trying to keep and run everything smoothly. So I've created a whole bunch of different things. I don't even know where to start. Um, I've been playing around with making sets of envelopes and these are cardstock and I've printed double sided. These are purple, kind of a purple theme and they're tied with lace and there's a pin with a silver heart. I have low battery, so we'll see how this goes. Um, I guess I can just untie it this way. These are empty. I have some that have ephemera in them, but you can use them to organize ephemera. Um, you can use them to sew into a signature of a journal, to send as happy mail, to tuck in the journal full of ephemera. They all coordinate. I used a paper pack from Creative Fabrica, and I'm going to try to list the paper pack below. It's an affiliate link, so I get a little um, commission on that if you purchase it, but that's these colors here. And I think there's a few other ones, but the ones that you see on the outside, they're uh, damask or damask, however you pronounce it. Um, they're purple, they're really pretty. And I've done stitching, they're just little pouches. And then on the inside, I've printed images from Pretty in Purple, Down Purple Lane, and Lavender and Lace. So they're really pretty inside. I think that just really adds to it. This is from Down Purple Lane. That's my newest purple kit. Oh, and Wisteria and Roses. Pretty in purple. So it's a set of six, perfect for organizing ephemera. You could organize, if you're new to junk journals and ephemera, this would be all you need to get started. And you could label, you could just write on here, um, you know, you could do, say, journal cards, washi stickers, you know, whatever you wanted to call each one. If you have been journaling for a while and you have an incredible amount of stuff, you could use this for only purple ephemera if you wanted to. I also love sewing envelopes like this into signatures of junk journals so you have place for ephemera. So I've got one of those. And then I have one of these. These are also empty. This is my new Limberlost paper collection with 24 images, but I have six envelopes here, um, a really pretty butterfly ribbon, and then a beaded safety pin that my mother-in-law made. You can take that off and use it on a project if you would like. They're stitched, same as the other ones. I've just used my Limberlost collection. I will try to leave links if possible below to the prints and the digitals. Um, but I've used Limberlost for the outside and inside. Got the branches with the leaf interior. We have the butterflies with the deer on the inside. This pattern with hearts and then the cute owls with the trees. And that's only six of the, or 12 of the images. There's 12 more since it is a 24 pack. I think this was on the front. Not that it really matters. It's just the ribbon coordinates with the top one. 
I'm like, all right. So that one is just empty. Again, you can organize ephemera or use it for happy mail, whatever you like. And then this is a Valentine's Day set of four, and they do have ephemera in it. I have some vintage seam binding that I've tied it with, and this little um, beaded icicle dangle that my mother-in-law made. It has pink screens and blues and whites in it, so you could reuse that if you wanted. And I've used my Creamy Cranberry Garnet paper pack. Um, really, really pretty. And then on the inside... This was, I think this is a Creative Fabrica. It's that same paper line as the purple ones, but it's the same on the inside of all of them. So these are Creamy Cranberry Garnet. Very romantic. They have the script, the cranberry type florals and roses. And then each one has ephemera in them. And these are vintage Valentines. They're printed on cardstock and they're inked. If you like these images, there's six different ones in each pack, and that's not even all of them. There's 48 total images. I've only used, I think, 24, because six in each one. But I have moved them over to vintageimageclub.com, my public domain subscription site. So you might want to head over there. That link is below as well, and grab those. So you can maybe do a little bit of Valentine journaling or Valentine cards. You can print them larger too, so they would be the perfect size for Valentine cards or Valentine postcards. And this one is also Valentine themed. And I love this ribbon. Isn't that pretty? There's a pink button. And then there's four. I've used Antique Papery. Her link is below as well. Isn't that pretty? And then inside, there's these cute little Valentines. There's four in each one, and they're, they're all different. But these will be coming to Vintage Image Club in the next day or two. So if you sign up, you will have access to those. Well, this one has five. Maybe they have five. I don't know. Four or five in each one. And they're Valentine themed, of course. The envelopes, oh, the insides of the envelopes, I used Caroline's Craft Tree, some of her tea dyed um, papers, stenciled tea dyed papers, I think it was called. So I thought that was really subtle and pretty to put on the inside. And of course, the envelopes themselves aren't really Valentine themed. You could use those just for botanicals or pinks or flowers or whatever you like and wish. And I have one more set of envelopes, and this is a TLC Creates Vintage. This is from Paulette, and there's a little silver butterfly, again, butterfly ribbon. These are gorgeous. Look at these. She just, it's one of her new paper packs. I'll try to have her linked below, too, if possible. And then inside, each one has several pieces of ephemera. I've included some from Bright Soul. Um, these are Forever Blue, Music Blooms, and Sketches of Nature. Those are all different of my kits or ephemera packs. The probably the best, the best way, if any of those ones I've mentioned sound interesting, is to just search it in my website, nevermorecreation17.com, and it'll pop right up printed in digital. Then I have some ephemera folders. This is an entomology one. I've used my Limberlost paper, one of the pages. It's cardstock stitched around, and then it opens up like this. So this is Limberlost paper, this is Limberlost paper. And what's really cool about this one, here's another one I have that's mushroom themed from the Limberlost. And this is Limber Lost here. So I ripped out these corners to sew on to put in ephemera. And then this was the negative of that. So I put it in the middle going the other way. And I have a bunch of bookmarks and journal cards, which I've cut out to look like big postage stamps from Antique Papery. It's an entomology collection. That's one of her newer collections. So it's kind of getting you started. Of course, you could use this folder for any kind of ephemera. And this one is mushroom themed and there's a whole bunch of vintage mushroom it, um, images. I think these are from, 
what is the name of that website? Oh, Artvintages.com, I think. But there's just public domain mushrooms in here. And of course you can stuff it with as much ephemera as you'd like. And then I have four different vintage fern ones. These are Joanne's Digitals. I've turned into, these ones don't have any stitching, but I've turned them into ephemera folders and I'm just gonna list quantity four because they're pretty much all the same. They're just slightly different. And then inside I've used vintage Rolodex cards. There are three of them um, stacked up and then there's ephemera. There's uh, vintage ferns from Vintage Image Club. There's Daniel Ridgeway Knight from Vintage Image Club. There's some playing cards little vintage mini bird book page and a vintage game card and they're all pretty much similar so you get a whole bunch and of course you can tuck in a lot more ephemera and as you use ephemera you can tuck more in so just trying to make a bunch of things for you guys um ephemera wise so we've got that now let's get into the Marketplace journals. So the Marketplace is an online consignment shop that I have on my website for selling journals. And these are from Glombowski. I'm not sure her first name. Uh, hopefully it'll say inside. But this one is called Soar. It is a flexible hardcover with two chunky signatures. It feels like it's a um, recycled cardboard and fabric cover. But look at how pretty. The colors are beautiful. There's a little bird charm here on the bottom. And then let's open this up. There's a little bird there. It's all layered up. You have a little envelope with a couple goodies in here. I don't know which way she had that. <laughs> okay, it is. it looks like it's Leanne Glimbowski. Soar. Really pretty. Look at, you get a little shaker pocket. Isn't that fun? So this is the, my first experience with her journals. I'm already loving them. Look at some eco dye paper, really pretty. So you have this nice artistic nature feel to it. Bunch of little fabric pieces. Kind of a grungy vintage, but definitely nature. She's added a lot of, look at that, eco dye paper. A lot of pieces and tags and layering. Look at how cute that is. Collaging. Love the eco dyed. There's a feather. Beautiful belly band and laces. It says love, explore. Little journal cards. Oh. Isn't that cute? Just so many different things, lots of messy stitching. I always think that adds a lot to a journal. I know I'm only adding two journals to the marketplace today, so that's not a whole lot, but there'll be more coming soon, very, very, very soon. And if you're looking for another journal and um, there's only two available, there is a journal available in my section, Lindsay's Handmaids, um, that is nature themed as well. So you can check that out. And that I painted with, I love that trim, with acrylic paint. Beautiful fabric on the backing. Fabric keeps it really, it let, makes it last a long time. So I love fabric as an option for a journal cover. This is a nine by six size. Oh, I just noticed the little bird cage up on top. Isn't that cute? And then this, this is, this is the reason why there are only two junk journals. This isn't cute. This is huge. This is incredible. I, I'm speechless. Look at how giant that is. It's called For the Love of Chocolate. And how perfect is that with Valentine's Day right around the corner? Look at all these charms. Oh. The Joy of Chocolate. So it looks like it's a chocolate book cover, maybe. And look at what she's done here. Added this brown paint to make it look like dripping chocolate. A doily on the spine. I mean, this is one of those once in a lifetime you're going to see a journal like this almost. For the Love of Chocolate. Cover made from the Joy of Chocolate hardcover book. Copy dyed paper. Some vintage. 252 pages. 
look at that. If you love chocolate, um, I do. I usually eat dark chocolate. Look at the stitching. A whole bunch of little pieces of ephemera that have to do with cocoa or chocolate. Some of the book pages from the book that she used. I think this would be so much fun to start in February, but then just continue to use. It would also be great for a dessert recipe journal. If you are a chocoholic and you love little, um, to make things that are chocolate, like chocolate brownies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cakes, and icings, and you could put lots of recipes in here as well. Get a whole little notepad with a magnet. So you could even take that out and put that on your fridge. I always keep one on my fridge. I love her stitching. So many little sweet pieces. This is just such an incredible piece of artwork. I mean, she's put thought into every little detail. <laughs> I love this size. It's so unique. And look at all these tabs she's put on the edges. You have room here to tuck stuff as well. Oh, this is like a bookmark. Cool. Wow. I really hope you send me more journals because I'm hooked on your style for sure. It's stitched around in the little coffee dyed pieces, so you can, that's really neat. Never seen anything quite like that. Little treat bag, chocolate pages. Oh my goodness, there is so much to this. Lots of places for journaling. I don't think you could be sad and journal in this. Little quilt heart, quilted heart. It would just cheer you right up. Look at that little envelope. Some little coffee dyed tags in there. Clusters. So even though she only sent two journals, this is worth multiple, multiple journals for sure. Little notepad. Very nice. Little like scrap tear pad that you could use to create your own collages. Hershey's milk chocolate. Here's a paper clip that fell off. I'll make sure that gets on the page. So many. Look at that packaging. She's used to stick goodies in. Crazy, how beautiful. I can't imagine how much time it must have taken her to make this. More chocolate ephemera in there. All different size pages. I love the coffee dyeing effect. There's a little goodie bag there as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I was definitely inspired by these journals and I hope you'll find some fun items to shop for today. I'll see everyone in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you could comment below, are you a chocolate person or not? Yes or no? I would love to know if you are a chocolate person, what is your favorite type of chocolate to eat? I normally eat dark chocolate, like 80 to 90% dark chocolate since it's healthier for you and you definitely get a taste for it. So I love that. Um, before I started eating healthier, <laughs> Reese's peanut butter cups were definitely probably one of my favorites. So let me know below what your favorite chocolate is and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not.